Welcome to the Comma Man Football Show. My name is James Coburn, and today's episode, we're talking about Tyrod Taylor free agency profile, uh, essentially getting into some analytics relating to free agency players. Now, um, as I told a couple of you guys in past videos, I'm going to be releasing a free agency analytics guide uh, very soon, as soon as the season's over. Uh, have a couple little things I have to tie up in terms of putting um, as current data as possible. <coughs> so essentially, you know, updating that so that I'm giving you as current of information as possible about all the different uh, players in free agency. But once that's done, that is going to be released before free agency, and it's going to have a ton of information on virtually every single running back, quarterback, wide receiver, tight end, offensive lineman, defensive lineman, linebacker, cornerback, safety, and even punters and kickers, all of those guys will have profiles that will detail their production, their pre-draft profile, uh, and uh, just, in, just in general, just every sort of analytics analytics based information you could possibly have for those players so it's going to be a very big guide it's probably one of my most ambitious projects i've ever decided to do but i figured i just got to do it uh, because it's going to provide you guys with some information that uh that you're pretty much not going to get everywhere uh to say the least when it comes to free agency time but to kind of tease the guide a bit i wanted to do a couple profiles here and there on prospects and players that are going to hit free agency and just give you sort of a taste of the information that will be in the free agency guide and I figured I would wanted to start with a quarterback in particular uh, in Tyrod Taylor one because he's not playing uh, in the NFL anymore or at the very least he is not a starting quarterback for the Buffalo Bills anymore so all of his data pretty much is set in stone unless he plays uh, this Sunday which uh, or at least the week 17, uh, which I kind of doubt that happens. But two, um, he's a guy that kind of has a relatively interesting profile and just kind of gives you some examples of some of the information you're going to be getting in the draft guide. Now, all terms and definitions are going to be in the description, so I'm going to be showing you data and explaining the data as best as I can and leaving definitions in the description. So if you're not familiar with any of the work that I do, you can just go there and all that information uh, will be there. So starting off with Tyrod Taylor in terms of his profile, the first place I start when it comes to any player, prospect, et cetera, is what their pre-draft profile looks like. And when it comes to quarterbacks, the pre-draft profile for quarterbacks is high school production and FBS stat score. Uh, high school production score deals with the completion percentage plus touchdown to interception ratio compared to all of their uh, of the positional peers uh, in the era in which they played. Uh, the FBS stat score takes into account completion percentage, touchdown to interception ratio, and strength of schedule to give you an idea of how productive they were relative to their peers and the type of competition they were playing as well. So based on both of those metrics, Tyrod Taylor scored a 44.84 high school production score and an 81.73 FBS stat score. And what this means based on the data that's available is his high school production score did not hit the long-term starting threshold of 69 or higher, meaning every single long-term starting quarterback since the 2007 NFL draft class had at least a 69 or higher high school production score every single long-term starting quarterback and not only that every single multiple pro bowl quarterback in that time span from from the 2007 nfl draft class to now every pro bowl quarterback during that time period had an 84 or higher uh high school production score as well so tyrod taylor from the get-go uh was a prospect that was a little bit more of a project coming out of high school than a lot of people realize and not only that because of that you can see how he might have been a little bit behind the curve or at least the natural uh, progression curve that every quarterback typically has uh, and on top of that when you look at the fbs stat score this is the only area where he kind of does shine uh, his highest uh, college production score was 81.73 out of 100 uh, based on my data 
he pretty much hits the Pro Bowl threshold, meaning every, well, 95% of all multiple Pro Bowl quarterbacks since 1958 had at least an 80 or higher score. So Tyra Taylor had an inconsistent production profile, to say the least. He he didn't hit the high school production threshold to become a long-term starter. And long-term starter, definition-wise, is 64 starts or more in their career. Uh, and Tyra Taylor, unfortunately, has not hit 64 starts yet um, in his career because he's kind of had a wonky career, to say the least. Uh, and then, of course, you have his his FBS production, which definitely hits the Pro Bowl threshold, which could explain why you know he is a starting quarterback, or at least he was a starting quarterback for a certain amount of time. But the real question is, can he be a long-term starting quarterback? You know, can he basically take his skill set and go on to more things? And this is where we get into his actual NFL production. So this is all that information I was telling you about before, but with NFL data. So this is essentially what his touchdown to interception ratio was compared to the NFL, his completion percentage compared to the NFL, yards per attempt, adjusted yards per attempt, quarterback rating, and the total QB stat score, which is the same as the FBS stat score. It takes into account touchdown to interception ratio, uh, completion percentage, uh, and basically combines those together with strength of schedule to give you a general uh, score, uh, if you will. And based on this information, as you can clearly see, uh, Tyra Taylor had a very promising 2015 season. 27, uh, 20, uh, 2016, excuse me, kind of started to dip a bit. His completion percentage data, he was basically average. Uh, his yards per attempt was very, uh, I would say, mediocre. And his adjusted yards per attempt was not exactly that flashy, nor was his quarterback rating. And he followed it up in 2017 with almost an identical type of season with a little bit better touchdown to intercepts ratio, a little bit better completion percentage, but pretty much the same sort of issues in terms of yards per attempt and adjusted yards per attempt and quarterback rating. Um, so a lot of Tyrod Taylor's issues from 2016 to 2017 have dealt with just the inability to get a high amount of yards per attempt and adjusted yards per attempt, uh, you know, in terms of the offense. So the offense has not exactly been the most explosive down the field um, type of thing over the last two seasons. And it's really hurt his quarterback rating and, of course, his total QB stat score. Now, has he been uh, a terrible quarterback? Not necessarily, because if you look at his quarterback rating and you look at his other sort of data, he does have a lot of positives indicating a quarterback that could be an average quarterback to, you know, not necessarily an above average quarterback or a top 10 quarterback, but definitely an average-ish quarterback in that sort of range. Uh, but he definitely has uh, some things that are kind of negatives in his profile. Then when we get to some other sort of data points, so now we're looking at completion percentage data. Uh, this essentially looks at what his completion percentage has been in various downs and distances, focusing on first down, second down, third down, and fourth down. And adding in the win percentile. So these are essentially the average score in these particular data points for a 90 percentile or higher winning team. 80% to higher winning team, 50% to higher winning team, and 50% to or less winning team. Um, so essentially teams that lose more games than they win are at the very bottom. That's what they usually average in terms of completion percentage. And then, of course, as you go up, you know, the higher that your completion percentage is in various downs and distances, uh, or at least the average is, uh, the more likely you are to win more football games. In Tyrod Taylor's case, uh, he has had he's been inconsistent really across the board uh he his first down completion percentage uh was fantastic in 2015 dipped to average in 2016 and then crept back up in, in uh, 2017 his second down completion percentage was by far his weakest element this year in particular uh and then when you look at his third down completion percentage 2015 to 2016 was just abysmal and then he was able to have a, a pretty amazing um, third down completion percentage in 2017 and of course fourth down has really just been kind of meh um, throughout his entire career but honestly his completion percentage in terms of various downs and distances has been all over the place uh, to say the least um, he definitely has had some seasons where he had some positive areas to his game you know first down second down especially have been you know more positive areas in terms of his completion percentage but the biggest thing to take away from this data uh, that you should just take away is that you want a quarterback who does well in all three downs. You know, you don't want a quarterback who is really good on first down, really good on third down, but meh on second down, 
Uh, and you also don't want a quarterback who's really good on first down, really good on second down, but meh on third down. Um, so he's a quarterback who, at the very least, has flaws where he's just not able to have a solid completion percentage on every single down and distance. You know, and that's definitely something that um, is, is kind of an issue for him. Then when we get to his first down conversion rate, so this data deals with the ability to convert in various downs and distances. You know, when people talk about third down conversion rate or first down conversion rate or second down conversion, you know, the ability to convert a first down on different downs and distances. This is another area where Tyrod Taylor has been very inconsistent. Um, in 2015 in particular, below average on first down, below average on third down, 2016 below average on first down, and then in 2017 below average on second down. I will say this though about his 2017 season though, very good first down conversion rate and very good third down conversion rate. So he was able to uh, convert on third down. And as you can clearly see, he's been able to kind of improve on that because he went from having below average in 2015 to a little bit above average in 2016 to pretty dang awesome in, uh, in 2017. So Taylor has definitely been able to improve on his first down conversion rate in these various downs and distances, but definitely not the most consistent. Um, on any In any given year, he's just kind of all over the place when it comes to his data. Uh, and ultimately, that's that's kind of the, uh, the ultimate crux or question or just sort of a dilemma to discuss, you know, as I kind of wrap this up is, I think when you look at Tyrod Taylor, when you look at his high school production, he, he looks like a guy who was never really destined to be a 64 start or more starting quarterback, let alone a Pro Bowl starting quarterback. And when you look at his NFL data, you can see the reasons why. You can see areas of his game that have been really inconsistent. Yards per attempt in particular, for example, has not exactly been where it needs to be. Completion percentage has not exactly been where it needs to be consistently. And then when you look at his uh, completion percentage across the board, various downs and distances, and you look at his first time conversion rate across the board, various downs and distances, definitely all over the place as well. But is he a quarterback who, based on how he's performing, because this is the biggest thing, whatever the pre-draft profile says is, is what that is, but is Tyrod Taylor producing? Is he doing the things on paper indicative of at least a starting quarterback, a guy who ends up being a, a or at the very least, is he a guy who is performing like a top 32 quarterback in the NFL? And I would say yes. So despite a lot of the issues that he has, uh, definitely went in terms of conversion rate, in terms of completion percentage, uh, in terms of yards per attempt, despite all those issues that he definitely does have, you have to come away saying that, yes, the pre-draft profile is not amazing uh, in terms of high school production. Yes, he's not exactly been the most consistent, but is he a player who should be a top 32 player? Because again, you have 32 teams, 32 quarterbacks, should Tyrod Taylor be amongst them? And I think based on data, absolutely. Uh, as far as how much do you pay a guy like this? I mean, again, you would pay him whatever uh, a bottom uh, kind of quarterback is kind of worth for, you know, a bottom starting quarterback. So maybe like pay him like a Josh McCowan or pay him um, like that type of a guy, you know, kind of a journeyman quarterback, if you will, uh, because uh, that, that seems to be what his profile kind of in indicates for the most part. However, there's still value here with this guy. So uh, I do understand there's a lot of people that just kind of want to write him off and just say, hey, go back to being a backup. But I do think when you look at Tyrod Taylor, he does have some positives. He does have some things that he does well. It's just a matter of realizing that there is a certain amount of ceiling with him that he probably is not going to hit. You know, he's not exactly ever going to be a multiple Pro Bowl or multiple All Pro type of quarterback. So because of that you have to value him a little bit less than those guys but can he become a long-term starter or at least can he be a starter for you and be that stop gap and do those other sort of things for you and win some football games absolutely um, so that's the general profile when it comes to tyrod taylor uh, and of course uh, my name is james coburn uh, you can find my other work at draftcoburn.wordpress.com you can also follow me on twitter at geometrics and if you like this content and you want more content like this be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Uh, share this video as well uh, with anybody that you know. Hit that notification button so that you're always notified when another video of mine drops. And I will talk to you guys in the next video. Peace.